Hi, it's Kyle T. Mosley of Saints News Network here with Bob Rose at the Bayou Blitz. Bob, what's going on? Not much. Everybody tuning in. I want, uh, I, I, uh, want to wish everybody a happy belated holidays. Uh, yeah, I was certainly honored to join you as always. Yeah, and we have a special guest, our friend, Mr. Steve Weich of the NFL Network and HBCU Legacy Bowl commentator. What's going on, Steve? Hey, man, Happy New Year to everybody. I'm all excited now. We pretty much, for the most part, know, have, have a clear picture of the, of the NFL playoffs coming up. Um, it's, kind of, it's kind of made things even more exciting. You know, bizarre finish through the season with half these teams not being able to have their complete rosters out there because of COVID and injuries. But, man, it, it, it's going to be an interesting postseason and uh, a whole lot going on leading up to the Super Bowl. Definitely. Let's jump in, guys. Let's talk about what's going to happen in week 18. The New Orleans Saints will be visiting with the dreaded Atlanta Falcons in Mercedes-Benz Stadium. So, Steve, you've been covering the Falcons since preseason. Uh, You know these guys pretty well. You've been covering Atlanta for most of your career, to be honest. Uh, What's going to happen when the Saints take on the Falcons? What's going to happen? I don't know. That's why they play the game. And look, with the Saints, with the Saints, you never know because their quarterback situation. Look, it looks like Taysom Hill is going to be back. Um, their defense is, you know, has been really good. But it's a rival. Um, it's a game where the Falcons. The one thing, you know, even though we've seen the Falcons lose, uh, what are they seven and nine going into the game? I think, um, yeah. like they compete, right? Where they're overmatched talent-wise, you know, we saw it last week against Buffalo. Eventually that warmed down. But when it's a game like this with the Saints, they, they will compete through the fourth quarter. So, you know, the Saints cannot have any have any turnovers. They can't have any dumb penalties because it's right there for them. And it's crazy to think that if the Saints win, yeah, they're, they're getting the playoffs. I mean, like, what? How, how in the world did that happen? Like yeah. their entire team, their entire team is like sitting someplace except on the field, and they have this opportunity. The fact that Sean Payton's not getting mentioned for a possible coach of the year, yeah, Cody. blows my mind. Yep. I mean, look, look. Now, granted, you know Zach Taylor and, and Matt Lafleur and Vrabel, all these guys are, are incredibly deserving of that honor. But the fact that Sean Payton's not getting mentioned, having to deal with the deck of the cards he's had to, to deal with this year, it one to me one of his best coaching jobs ever. Yeah, well, you have to believe that Coach, he relishes these underdog type of uh, situations, right? And to be able to man a team and get a team to be able to win and get them into the playoffs will be kind of an icing on the cake. But how deep can they go? Bob and you and I have been talking a little bit about that. What's your thoughts? Yeah, no, not not very. Look, if they, if they play Tampa, right, if Tampa's the number two seed, they they beat the Bucs. And then that's happened before, Tom. I mean, no matter who the quarterback has been for the Buccaneers, for whatever reason, the Saints have had their number. Whoever's coaching the Buccaneers, the Saints have had their number for the most part. So um, we'll see. But, look, if, it, if it's got to go through, you know, if, they, if they've got to play the Rams. You know, we don't know who the number two seed is going to be, the Rams, Dallas. I, you know, I'd give them a shot possibly against Dallas the way it's playing. Right now they're a little hot and cold. And, again, the Buccaneers, we'll see. They're not beating the Rams. Um, hmm. but it, it's, it wouldn't be a deep run just cause you know, again, their, their talent at some point talent catches up to you, um, mm-hmm. the deeper you go, but you know, you know, the fact that they could get there, they could win a game. I mean, they could surprise somebody in that wild card round. Yeah. Bob. Hi, yeah, Steve, I'd like to switch gears a little bit if I could. I know we talked to you, we sat down with you for a little bit in uh, preseason and we were talking about Jameis Winston. Uh, what before Jameis went down? What was your assessment of how he was doing? Uh, and you know, if you if you're in the New Orleans Saints front office or your coach Sean Payton, would you make a run at him bringing uh, make a run at bringing him back at quarterback uh, for you in 2022? Yeah, look, I thought he was playing pretty well. Was he lighting it up? No. I mean, we saw some games early on where he was efficient enough, right? But he was playing well enough. You know, the, the, the arc was going in such a way where he was eventually going to win more ball games for them, not just kind of be along for the ride. Like he was going to make the types of plays to win ball games for him. Now, we can say what we want about Jameis or whatever, 
or whoever's playing quarterback for him. The fact that they've had so many injuries to their receiving core, um, you know, I, I don't know how many quarterbacks to be able to generate, you know, those consistent 300 yard games and, and things like that. So it was always going to be kind of a well enough process throughout the season, especially not having Michael Thomas and some of the injuries they've had with tight end, tight ends and, and things like that. But um, yes, to, to the second question, I think the Saints are going to be very involved with Jameis because this quarterback market is going to be insane, right? You could have Russell yeah. Wilson moving, Deshaun Watson moving. Um, and at some Kirk point, Cousins. because, well, Kirk Cousins didn't go anywhere. His, his salary is his salary's too big. There, you know, he's, he's not going anywhere. But when you look at the Saints' salary cap situation, you know, they're not going to be able, and, and the fact that they don't have any draft picks because they've been traded away, they're not going to be able to be huge players with that top tier, you know, quarterback talent. So maybe they can bring in. Somebody, I tell you what, um, I, I'm blanking on his name, but the backup quarterback for Baltimore, I would think he would be piquing some Huntley. teams' interest in terms of trade. Value. Yeah, Huntley. I would think he'd be piquing some teams' interest in terms of trade value. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, there's going to be other quarterbacks on the move, but I think the Saints, if Jameis is healthy, like they they could go, they could do one more again with, with Jameis. That um, he may not be their their top priority, but I don't see any harm. Um, with them giving him another shot, unless some team comes and signs him away. Good, and I, and, I, and, I, and I don't, and I don't expect that to happen. With all things being equal, I think James to come back to New Orleans. Nice. Okay, all right. Sunday's game, Matt Ryan. Could this be his last one as a Falcon? No, Matt. Matt's going to come back for another year. His money, his money's really big, and he showed this year. I mean, I know a lot of people in Atlanta don't love the guy, right? But he showed this year what, he, what, what type of competitor he truly is because he could have bailed, man. I mean, he was he got his brains knocked in. You know, he didn't have you know many receivers. The skill positions were the worst that he's probably ever played with in Atlanta, and he showed up, man. He showed up. He played well. He was all in. Um, so I know they love him there. He's got. I think he's going to finish out his contract one more year. I don't think he wants to go out like this. So I, I don't think we're going to be doing him the, the Ben Roethlisberger tour this year. That'll happen in 2022. All right. Good, how good stuff. This, Steve, how do you see this game you know, with New Orleans and Atlanta playing out? I know you talked about the good rivalry. Time. You've seen many of them over the years. Uh, you know, do, do the Saints have enough firepower uh, you know, to, to match uh, Matty Ice? Because you know he's going to put up points even on that Saints defense. Yeah, I, I, I think you're I think you're optimistic in that regard. I think the Saints defense, the way I'm seeing Matt Matt Ryan begin ragdolled, and the way I see Cam Jordan, Cam Jordan and Marcus Davenport finishing out the season, I think there's gonna be problems for the Falcons offense. Um look the the, the key is the Saints stopping their, their run game, which isn't an explosive. Cordero Patterson's nursing that ankle injury, so he has not been as effective as he was just a couple weeks ago. So as long as the Saints don't turn the ball over, I think they're going to win. It's going to, it's going to be an ugly game. You know, even if it's on the turf, it's going to be like it's in the mud. It's going to be a, a 2013-2017 game, but I think the Saints end up winning this ball game. All right. Let's turn the page. Let's talk about HBCU sports. And I know you will be one of the commentators for the HBCU Legacy Bowl. You also are a part of the selection committee for the Black College Football Hall of Fame and the Hall of Fame class of 2022 was just announced today. Talk a little bit about that. Just an incredible class. I mean, it, it's amazing. As you go through this process every year, you know, you say to yourself, well, because the heyday of black college football was in the 60s, 70s, and early 80s, that it's got a finite timeline, right? That at some point you're going to run out of really good players to put in the hall. And then going through the process this year, like, yeah, that's a good decade or two away because there's so many – I mean, there's just so many great players who didn't get in. I mean, it's, you know, Albert mm-hmm. Lewis. I mean, there's some, some of these great guys. I mean, just think Aeneas Williams just went in like two or three years ago after right. he went to the Pro Football Hall. Winston Hill went in last year after. So this year we've got great players. I mean, Donald Driver, you know, the great Packers wide receiver, Sammy White. One of my heroes growing up, a former receiver for the Vikings. Um, Nate Newton, you know, Newton. one of the best offensive linemen of his era on those great Cowboys teams. Um, you know, he he's going in. You know, those are some of the guys. Ben Coates, like Coates. this dude was a yeah. stud tight end for the Patriots for years. 
played at Livingstone College. Um, so, you know, in terms of like the, the modern era type players, it's another just incredibly loaded class. And then you've got, you know, big train Moody and, and, you know, one of, and then, you know, we're at, we had a special contributor category this year. Um, we, we made an exception to get in Roscoe Nance. Um, yeah. Long time journalist, USA Today uh, writer for years. Roscoe is someone when I was a young pup in this, who took me under his wing. Um, with black college sports and especially in the NBA. I mean, Roscoe lived in DC. I covered the Wizards for a while and I worked at the Washington Post. And Roscoe's the guy who who uplifted me and, and helped shape me. And um, you know, he passed last year. And Roscoe was the guy who kind of led the selection committee in the process with Black College Football Hall of Fame. So, you know, we're like, look, we we've got it, we've got to do him justice with this opportunity to get him into Roscoe's going in with this great class. So just, just another fantastic class. The ceremony would be in Atlanta uh, in June. And then of course, all of these guys will be enshrined at the pro football hall of fame where it, there's a wing for the black college football hall of fame uh, right. in Canton, Ohio as well. Yeah. That's awesome. It's beautiful. All right. I know you have to go. Last question. HBC legacy bowl. You will be there covering it. You'll be there the entire week. I will be there as well. Talk right to on. me about it. What can we expect? Yeah, look, so myself, myself, Charles Davis, and Bucky Brooks, a former NFL player and, and scout, will be on the call for the NFL Network when it, when this game airs February 19th. But as you mentioned, it's a week of events. I mean, think – not events, but practices and, and to go along with the event. Think of the Senior Bowl, right, where these guys are going to be going up against each other. It's 100 draft eligible players from HBCUs, coaches from HBCUs, trainers, staffers from HBCUs. The NFL will have its scouts. The Canadian Football League will have its scouts there. So many other leagues, USFL and whatnot, will have their scouts there. So this is an opportunity for these players, the Akil Glasses of the world, the Jermaine Martins of the world. It seems like half of Jackson State's roster is going to be you know, playing in this game, as they should, because they got players at Jackson State. There's a reason yeah. why they won all those games this year. They got some players. Um, James Houston. So, yeah. Co correct. Right. So – you know, they're going to be involved in this game, but, but it's a week of them getting competition against one, one, you know, one another showing if a guy's is a, is a tackle in college, if he projects as a guard in the NFL, him getting a week changing positions or a 43 DN getting some work as a three, four outside linebacker because of maybe his body type or whatnot. So this is where they can show these NFL scouts and have conversations with these NFL scouts that they may not get because they may not get a regular combine invite or something like that. So there's this time where the NFL is going to have no excuses not to know who these players are. So look, there's only been one player from an HBCU drafted the past two years. That's criminal. So again, with this, with the HBCU combine coming up, it's going to be aired on the NFL network. It's going to take place right before the senior bowl. And with players from HBCUs take, you know, getting invited to the senior bowl and the East West shrine game and the collegiate bowl, there are no excuses. And that's all that this is. It is creating opportunities for players and, again, coaches, staffers, everyone else to interact with the NFL. So there's no excuses. The pipeline can be increased. And these NFL teams can find players who can help them win ball games. Players and coaches that can help them win ball games. That's, that's the, the most important thing right here. Awesome. All right. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate yes, your time. You. Bobby, I appreciate your time. Happy New Year to you and your family, man. And hopefully – we will be able to connect pretty soon in New Orleans. We will. We will. All right, guys. All the best. God bless. All right. Thank you. Take care.